Hey there, welcome to The Hand Toolery. I'm Andrew Malacy, and today I'm gonna to be showing how I process a large slab. I've got this really nice slab here that is walnut. I think it's like, it was cut 30 years ago. I got it from a friend of mine, and the, it's just beautiful. It's something, well, let me, let me tell you. In its rough shape right now, it runs about 14 inches across but unfortunately about an inch in or so on at least one side and maybe on the other i have some bug damage that you know big deal i'm just going to cut off and then i'll process it from there i've also got a check in one end that runs about a third of the way down if not half of the way down the board but i'm going to leave it as wide as possible at this point and uh then whenever i you need to build something out of it then i'll break it down as necessary depending on how much more it moves but my plan is to soft the edges and get uh, uh, two parallel lines, then do a little bit of the of scrub work on it, plane away some of the top, uh, get it relatively flat, plane away some of the top marks and things like that. And then I'm going to let it acclimate a little bit more to my shop and find a project to use it for. So I'm going to let the camera roll as much as possible for this one. So you're going to aim for a long sort of long format video, but I want to give you an idea of what it looks like from slab to stock is what I'm calling this video. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I hope you enjoy it. We really only need three tools for this. I've got a tape measure, I've got a saw, and then I've got a, a chalk line. And I'm going to start by putting my chalk line on one end and, uh, and then running it all the way to the other and snapping a line just on one edge to get one line. And it's going to be on this edge here where, I don't know if you can see, but this is where some of the damage is to the board. This is the farthest one in, so I'm going to snap the line right over that and cut straight through that. I'm not going to cut on the inside of it. If I cut straight through it, the kerf will uh, more or less take it away. So let me move here and I'll give you an idea of what's going on here. I have a check right here. Well, a larger check. There's a small one right there. I'm gonna actually run the line straight down that check and exploit it. Then we have a huge knot that is on over here that is rotted out. I'm just going to snap it. So right here is where the most damage is. So I'll snap right through it. And since most of the meat is on this end of the board, I'm going to start on this end. There's our line. And it's a little too tall at this point for me to do standing up, which is what I would like to do. So I'm going to take it over to my little spool here to use like a saw bench. And because you can see how limited the space is here, I'm just going to have to saw like this, which is really poor for body mechanics, but it'll be okay. We're just getting it to rough dimensions. established I'm just going to do the overhand and actually going to try and sit on it here this will be much easier Oh my gosh, 
baixo. Not everything started to bind, but it's okay. TPI on this, but I can also tell you, like how, knowing I'm being filmed, makes me want to do it better, and I think I'm exerting effort I don't need to. huge slab. So, I'm just going to come around the other side, I think.
under 10 minutes. Whew. But now you can see the damage I'm talking about. Whew. All right, put that over there. So out of the way. Started to go a little off to the angle at the end of that cut there. Now we have one, I guess you could call it a reference edge. I'm gonna measure down from that to see what's the maximum width I can get. Here I'm about 13 and a half with the tiniest little bit before the bark. If I come over here, 13 and a half is the very widest at this point. 13 and 7 8 16 at the dip. Go all the way over here, almost 14. And over here it's 14. So I think I honestly, to make sure I miss a lot of the junk that could be in right here, I'm going to go 13 inches. And then I'll just cut my losses because a 13 inch wide board is massive anyways. So 13. I'm going to mark 13 on this side. That's that. I'm going to strike a line. I'm hooking it over my mark. And I'm just going to stretch it. All right, it's a good line. And now to repeat the process. Woo Can you see the line? Or manage to keep just about everything. We come very close to the smallest spot right there without actually going over. And that way I don't have to fool with the cut dying uh, and running out of space and then having to start it somewhere else. Gives me just a little bit of room there. This time we'll start on the left because it'll be easier, I think. Hopefully it works. Saws are flexible.
didn't bend it, didn't hurt myself. Still going strong. You see how close I'm cutting it? I'm like, I've got maybe a quarter inch right here. Two and a half feet left, maybe. getting a little dull so after this I'll probably have to give it a sharpening but fortunately whew, I've already done this on one board two boards two walnut boards my hands shaking but I think I'm on 18 minutes Let's see if I can finish everything before 20 just kidding I'm definitely gonna lose this crack though. 19 and a half. I'm still pretty pleased with how fast this took, even talking to you all. So this is how much I've left. The length of the saw from my tip down, from the fingertip down. Maybe six.
want to stab myself or ruin my nice apron, so here we go. That's that. Check out this piece. Look at how thin it was in one area. So that's, I'm pretty satisfied with that sawing. The whole process took over 20 minutes, 20, 22 and a half minutes. But I, just, I saw this much right here, these two sticks worth a little bit longer. So those two worth of four quarter walnut and actually have two four foot sections over there of, of three quarter or well, I would say it's half inch, two quarter. It was a workout. My saw is definitely getting dull now that I've done three of these, plus all the other work I've done on it. With the shaker nightstand video, I never saw it sharpened it since then on all those two by fours. But it's time. So, all right, now it's time to uh, gonna brush this sucker off, mow it over, and start take a scrub plane to it. All right, so I haven't even cut the video yet. So I wanna just give you an idea of what it looks like. Let's see how accurate I am. I will measure it right in front of you so you can get an idea of just how accurate it was or was not. All right, this end, you can see, maybe, I don't know if you can tell but on the video, but I stayed just outside the blue lines to save as much as I could. So I'm 13 to 16th here. Right in the middle. I'm, I'm just a shy, I'm like a 30 second shy of 13, so I, I dipped in right there. And then right here, I'm exactly 13. So I'm within three 30 seconds variance across the whole length. That's not bad. I'm fine with that. And again, you can see the check. If I were to use this as like a top board, I don't think that would be a hard, well, flipping it over now, changed my mind. It would be kind of hard. You could, yeah, it's about a quarter inch separated down here. It runs straight to here. And then I have another hole <clears throat> that's pretty deep right there. We'll see. But I was managed to, uh, I, I was able to saw away most of the damage and I'm, I know they didn't get any further into this side uh, besides like one or two holes. So I'm, I think I've probably got 95 or 97 or higher even percentage of the way, uh, the bug damage. So now I'm going to take my scrub plane, which is my number four C that I've got a scrub plane iron in. I did a video on the converting my five, the iron from my number five C into a scrub plane iron. Then I decided I'd just leave the, a nice blade in the five because I use it so much and put the scrub plane in my number four. And this is good, except it, if you go any way except sort of directly across, it does follow the, the dips. And I can see right here I have a 16th inch uh, concavity here. And also I know that because you can just look how it's riding really easily on this middle section. So that'll be my first one to, uh, to scrub away. What I've done is I've taken a board, almost like a batten board, and just clamped it all the way across. I've got the, the lower side of the clamp head up. And I'm gonna be really careful when I get to the ends to make sure I don't knock into the, the, the clamps there. One thing you might not think about, but it's a good practice to get into is, I've just done a little bit of sweating, and I'm starting to cool off and I'm feeling good. Maybe it still shows, but I, was, I got warm. So what I'm gonna do is, um, since I'm pro, I was, no, I was touching my saw and my iron, just sharpening it now with some sweat on my hands. I'm gonna just give a quick once over with my rag here, my old rag. There's that. Same with my plain blade. I'm gonna actually do the cap iron because that's what I handled quite a bit. Or the, yeah, the cap iron. And the lever cap. And this all gets, I always do this anyways, but there we go. I'm gonna chuck this sucker up and get ready to start making some shavings here. All right, I'm 
camera, I'll just leave it on. Oh, I'll put this away. I've got myself a straight edge here, and I'm gonna keep my oil close. It's cutting well. Okay, I'm just gonna take my straight edge down and see. Yeah, I have clearly I have a hump in the middle here. So that's where I'm gonna focus my attention. I could, if I wanted to, I could I could go across the board like this. Uh, I mean, you know, cross grain. But I, I'm really gonna want to start by well, I want to start by focusing on this hump that I can actually just feel right here in the middle. So. You know, right here it's okay, but it's, so. What I'm gonna do is just go with the grain real quick here. Well, now I remember I, I don't have anything at that end, so. You know, I'll just go across. I'm really gonna set this heavy, because I just wanna move this, remove this stuff quick. I'm not gonna go to the edge, I haven't beveled the edge yet, I just wanna concentrate on this hump. Just like that, I'm pretty close right there. There, I have rocking. Here, I'm pretty close. I can tell them pretty close here too. Looks like the hump sort of stops right here and picks back up in the middle. Even so, I'm gonna continue on. Here it is again. Right there, you see it? It's lifting me up about a sixteenth. I think I could go heavier on this even. Well, you can't see the cathedral here, but there's a knot here, curling the grain around it, switching it back and forth. Then we have cathedral patterns here. And so if I'm going this way, it's not doing so well, but if I come back this way, it's going much, much better. if not on. The 
Let me see if we can see just how far out my iron is extended here. There it is. You can kind of see it. It's pretty far. I'm going to try it a little bit farther out. And then I. Yeah, I don't want to go too far. But I can. I think I can get this one that's really high up. Get it a little faster. Ooh, wow, that's heavy. But it's doing well. Feeling good about this so far. <clears throat> because of this check, I don't know if I can worry too much about getting it flat. I think I can. I've got an idea. All right. Now let's see what happens. Oh yeah. So it created a hollow here now, but that's okay. <clears throat> Yeah, with this check over here, now I'm going to have to leave it. So now I'm going to bevel. Well, before I bevel, I'm going to check for flat all the way across now. Because there's no, there's no hump here. Not bad. Not bad there. Yeah, and since I cinched this sucker down, should have done that at the beginning, but it's okay. Now I'm gonna bevel the back edge. Essentially, I'm going to try and bring it all as close to flat as possible. I'm not going to labor over it. Well, I am laboring, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to kill myself to make it perfect, because this is just to get it more or less prepped, and uh, just for a tutorial. Because I'm not even sure what I'm going to make with it yet. Although I'm pretty sure I want to use as much of it as possible intact. So one more oiling. No, I just did it. But... Oh yeah, and again, I'm going across, as, oh, as straight across as possible, perpendicular because of how small this plane is. Then once I get to get a little bit more 
a little bit flatter, I'll bring my five or whatever. In. Can you hear it's taking almost the whole way across? That's a good sign. minutes. Wow. Can you see that? I don't even know if I need to go much further on that. There's a little bit of a hollow there. In there. I think it's because I was tearing out and started to skew. Did you notice I was skewing a little bit? Here it's pretty flat. But it is raised a little tiny bit here, which is why you heard all those me running into the board. I'm going to bring out my number five. I haven't even honed the blade on this, but so what? Got a mediumish cut set on it, and I'm going to go traversing it diagonally. Just clean it up a little bit. See how much thinner these are compared to what I've been taking? And you know how flat it is by if you can take a thinner shaving and uh, it'll still get most of the way. So, see what happens. Yeah, we'll have to increase the depth of that though.
and it's pretty close. I mean, I can't keep working on this. I'm pretty tired. There's a small hollow there still. Pretty, pretty flat. Very flat. Okay, now I need are some winding sticks. And I have to, I destroyed my other ones that I had, so I just have these two boards that I know are very, that are the exact same thickness or width or whatever, and I'm going to just set them across. But I'll put the larger one here. Here we go. That's not bad. Pretty dang close. It's and it's off. Yeah, I'll tell you what it is right now. Yep, it's the back corner. This whole part, which I have never really flattened really well during this whole process, is just high. And let me do something different. I'll bring it up much closer where I'm pretty sure it's flat because I can feel the difference there. And we'll go from there and see what happens. Yeah, that's pretty close. Much closer. It's not exactly perfect, but it's really close. Oh, look at that holly. You can see it now. That's close. So, my hypothesis is correct. Beyond this crack, where the crack really starts to open up, I just haven't flattened it enough. And that's partly because I was I just clamped it down at the end of the process, after it already taken off a quite a large chunk. You know, c'est la vie. It'll be what it is. So. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it and do the same thing on the other side. Did you see it pop up? Man. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Maybe comment, if you're still watching, what do you think I should have done with that check that had really warped? Because it was a full, I don't know, it was quite a bit of height difference. And like I said, if I'm going to try and glue this and maybe bow tie it, perhaps, I thought maybe I should just try and get it on the same plane. No pun intended. Well, just in case you want to see it, here's what it looks like. The one side. In total, we're 45 minutes in with me talking and all that stuff. It's a big board too. And I will almost guarantee you that if, uh, if I knew what I was doing a little bit better, if I was a professional or something, if I'm, and I'm not, obviously, this probably would be done already. But cool thing about this is I don't really have to speed. Go for speed. All right, we have a big hollow in the middle here. And I'm not going to try and bend it so far as to take it out. I just want to keep these surfaces more or less steady. Okay. I really like that. There's a little bit of pressure on it, but not so much as to warp it. Oh, this is going to get annoying quick. All right. Whatever. You know what? I can probably put a shim under this other. Let me do that. Yeah, that holds it nicely. All right, here we go. Back to assessing it. Yeah, hollow. Wow, it's actually not that much though. Quite a little bit. I mean, relatively little is what I'm trying to say. Since it's on either end, I'm gonna try and see, you know what, I'm gonna go one more clamp on this sucker.
I'm gonna just try and take the edges off first. try to get that out. There's a big dip here where the blade apparently dips. Well dipped, yeah. It could come out just with the natural process of it all. That did it for there. The one end. That came close. No. That's better. This thing still feels like it's going strong. Still got a heavy cut too. All right, I'm gonna traverse it perpendicular to the grain right now. <coughs> Gotta be careful of that clamp. Oh, that's nice. That's a full length shaving on this end here. That's great. I'm skipping. Not bad though. Now I gotta reestablish. Can you see that? This is so simple. After getting one side, it's like it's great. Doing well. I was skewing again. I was skewing.
definitely a dip. Now I know some of you are thinking, well I didn't get the, the thickness of it. Given, given the condition of some of the parts of this, I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm worried about the checks going to go, continue all the way through and connect with this other side. Right now I'm just getting it more or less squarish and I'm going to put it under a load of other wood to sort of hold it true as much as possible. And uh, hope and pray. But I'm expecting this to check even more. I don't know. Like I said, it's pretty old wood here, but I don't know. You never know. You make decisions, you live with them, right? Take it all the way down to this. I'm not gonna do that. for 30 minutes, I've got just about an hour, maybe a little bit more total into all, all of this. That's clean. dip in the middle. Still the tiniest little bit. But that's good. I'm going to take my number five and just do some cleaning up passes real quick. But I think my number four is done. Put it up on the rack here.
going well. sucker here I've got probably a 30 second gap I don't know small one but you can hear it and oh I'm clogging up What it's clogging up is the mouth here. I fitted a wood rubber blade to this. I had to file open the mouth and admittedly I got scared to open it up anymore. It's cutting here and here with like a four inch section in the middle that's not. I gotta move though. I'm tired and sweaty and got father's business to do upstairs. Most of the marks off. Most of the marks from the number four off. Oh, you hear that? I'm getting full length right now. say I'm put it again in front of the crack because that is a game you know game changer type deal close yeah this right side's higher yep It's a pretty consistent twist. Well, no. Yeah, the side's higher, which means this side could be lower. Probably is lower. Let's see if I can solve that real quick here. I made it a little better, not perfect. Nah. It's gonna require more work. More work than I'm not feeling it, like I'm up to at the moment. If this doesn't do it right now, then I'm done.
there's weird pockets of sap or something in right here. Might be more bug damage, but I have no clue what that is. That is nicer and flatter. It's coming a little flatter there. That's close. I got it close. Yeah. Now let's go across the whole thing. Ah, oh, see so that full full width. Okay, I'm glad I did that. Just about every one of those passages full width. Pretty good. And I still have a little bit of weirdness there. But that's closer, much closer. Two more. That's pretty close too. There we go. Woo! Okay, so this clock reads 40 since I started doing the other side. So it took me it took me 40 minutes to do both sides and get them each flat relative to each to themselves. Then I, what's left, I still have to do a thicknessing of it, but, you know, I should have just done it. I didn't have a good reason. I thought, you know, just do it in this video, but I thought I would just do both sides in this video, and then I should have just done the thicknessing, because it wouldn't have been any more work. In fact, it might have been less work. But if I have one defense of myself, it's, I'm not, I wasn't sure which side I wanted to keep as my nice side. See, the thing is, is, this side has much clearer grain, but it's got this huge low spot right there. This one, of course, has defects. It's got this knot that's gouged out here. It's got this ugly knot here. It's got this thing here, which I thought I'd hit a nail or something, but thank goodness it wasn't a nail. And... They're not lying flat either way, so. This is probably gonna be my bad side in the end, I think. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Wow, okay. I've done, so in the last day or so, I did this one. Uh, you know what, I'll get out the other slab, I'll show you. I, I did three slabs total in the last day. Okay, here's the other slab, the other large slab. The other large slab I finished. This one is just stunning. I love the grain on this one. It's really, really beautiful. Very straight, considering. There's some checks, but to a minor degree. And you know what? I will go ahead and get out the last slide. Yeah, I already put it away, but <laughs> since it's a, since I'm over here doing this, might as well. <clears throat> Here's the third. This one had by far the most damage as far as what I had to trim off. So I cut all the bark off this. I know it's a shame, but it was for the better. Look how much actual black, real black walnut wood, I mean, the, the hard wood or whatever it is called, is on this side. Versus the sap wood here. <clears throat> Something, if I tried, I could really get some like small panels or drawer sides or bought, I don't even know, out of this. But it's very thin. Very thin. I mean, just comparing it, you can see. See how the height difference is? 60 inches long. This one's 55. And the final tally on this one is 13 by. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. 
74 and a half, we'll call it. Center right on the end with my Sharpie. 74 point. Five. Terrible to write on. Okay, no big deal. This one is five, seven by fifty-five. Yes, yeah, seven by fifty-five. So I got two thirteen-inch wide ones, sixty inches and seventy-four inches. So six and seven feet basically. I got a four and a half footer that's real thin. And this is what I've been working on. Wow. Like I said, my little hand saw, my seven or eight points per inch, whatever it is, did a real good job ripping this stuff out. But I know this has been an extremely long video. Hopefully it's been helpful. I'm gonna actually condense this video into a much shorter version. But here's the, this is the long form video. And if you wanna see what else lies ahead of me, here it is. I've got more slabs. I just toppled over while I was sawing. Got more slabs, a ton of cedar, and other stuff. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope it's been an enjoyable and useful video, and I'll see you around for the next one.